How are we doing folks? Welcome back to another film. I was supposed to be coming up in the morning at silly o'clock. We're talking, I don't know, half past four, but probably about 30 miles from my house. And so it's at least an hour's drive. So I'll be getting up at three o'clock. Well, it's, it's no fun getting up at three o'clock in the morning, is it? So what I decided to do, jump in the motor. It's a beautiful night. I've actually, I've been up here a couple of hours actually. And, um, what I want to do is keep in the car tonight, so I, I'm I'm in the location already. So I get up at five o'clock and I'm here. I'm fresh, so I can grab a bit of bit of granite car. I've got all my gear. I'm going to show you now what I bring when I'm car camping. It's a great way of, of being on location. Um, you know, immediately you're not having a long drive to get to where you're going, and you haven't got to get up, you know, two hours earlier than you than you have to do. So. That's the plan. We're going to have a look at the motor now. I'll show you what I bring with me. And uh, yeah, come on, let's have a look. Okay, so this is the this is the abode for the night. So this is my setup when I'm car camping. So obviously I've got the access from the uh, you know the big tailgate. Good size the X Trail, cracking motor. I've got the four wheel drive option as well. Uh, you know, if I want to be going off into fields and all that kind of stuff, but we're just on the uh, we're just camping in a layby tonight. Be right. Um, so what I bring with me? Sleeping bag. I've got a I've got an air mattress, quite a thick um, Trekology air mattress. Brilliant, really thick, dead comfy. So I tend to leave leave this side of the vehicle open. So. You know, I can I can get in there. I'm about six foot, and there's plenty of room down there. So I just have me Trekology mat. I have another blanket. I've got an outhouse uh, blanket down there. Um, Food-wise, I've got a cool box with some stuff in for the morning. We're going to have bacon and egg butts in the morning, and 20 liters of water. So perfect for making brews and that. And then I've got this. Which is I made this about I made it about 15 years ago, and it's uh, it's what they call a wanigan. All right, so I made it for um, I actually made it for a canoeing trip, and it's basically it's just a wooden food box. And that's it. I got a bit carried away, ended up painting it. I was doing I was practicing uh, some uh, I was I was renovating a, a gypsy uh, or strong cart, so I ended up I ended up painting the whole thing and the top and everything, but. All I've got in, in the top of it, it's got a top comes out, I've got an um, outkit stove, I've got a ridge monkey stove as well, some gas, bits and bats, you know, bits of all sorts of stuff, all my cutlery, and then in the bottom I've got a load of, um, load of dried meals. I tend not to use these really when I'm out in the car camping because you can bring heavier stuff, you know, you can put you can put tins in, I've got tins of rice pudding and noodles and and also pasta meals and that, so it's perfect, absolutely perfect. So that's me that's my box full of bits and that and cutlery, uh, first aid kit. And then in the front I've just got a cool box with some freezer blocks in. I've got bacon, eggs, got milk for making me brews and that. So I'm only doing it overnight, I'm only here on a one nighter, so Obviously, if I were here for a few nights, you know, you just bring bring whatever you need. But that's me, that's me wanigan. So that stays there. A couple of frying pans, I say, and, and my stoves, and then I've got all my camera gear. So I'll put it all on that side, and then I've got a nice, nice clear, clear area down this side to sleep tonight. And that's it. That's as sophisticated as it is. It's not a, not a fancy motor on like we used to have, but it does the job. Like I said, it's perfect for, for being on location first thing in the morning and straight away, you know, you're out with the camera and getting the shots that you want. So we're gonna, gonna move further down now and uh, yeah, get the bed set up. And uh, what time are we on now? Nine o'clock now, lights dropped off. So we're not gonna get any pictures tonight. I've already had some lovely pictures of, uh, we've had a barn owl, we had curlew, wheat ear, hers. I've also seen a, a male hen harrier, which was fantastic. It was being mobbed by a couple of lapwings. It was obviously flying near a lapwing nest, and they were they were having a go at it. Um, 
there's little owls around here, there's loads of stuff, it's a fantastic spot. So hopefully in the morning we're going to get up, uh, there's a, a nice spot where the uh, barn owl comes in. So hopefully we're going to get some footage of the barnies in the morning and whatever's knocking about, you know, there's foxes and raw deer and all sorts. So we'll see you in the morning. set up for the night we've got a big trichology mat down I've got me my outhouse blanket which is going to go over the top of me because it's freezing sleeping in a car it's basically it's just a metal box in it so it is not warm sleeping in a car so you need you know even uh, even in summer it gets cold at night so I've got that big blanket snuggers out so it's 10 o'clock now, alarm, alarm set for quarter to five. I'm gonna get up, wander down there, hopefully. N areas, little owl, possibly, no, not shorties. Shorties aren't up yet. Um, barn owls, definitely, quite a few barn owls around here. And hers, wheat here, staunch yet, all sorts of stuff knocking about. So tonight we've seen, seen most of them target species, hopefully. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get some decent footage, alright, so I'm going to get uh, get tucked in here now, and we'll see you in the morning. Well, morning folks, ten past five, I literally woke up ten minutes ago and we're here, we're ready to go, absolutely perfect. I was warm enough in colour last night, it's, it got down to minus two, it's, so it's, it was cold. Luckily I brought the four season bag with me, so I was fine, really, really comfy, you know, on that big, big air mattress, so it's fine, it's not glamorous, and it's a little bit cramped, but I've not had to put a tent up, you know, I'm not messing about putting a roof tent up or anything like that, but once you're organised, you, you're right, so car camping is perfect, perfect for this kind of work, I've not had to get up at three o'clock and drive all the way up here, so... I'm just I'm going to grab a quick butty, a little bit of a drink, and I'm, I'm ready to go and bang on location. So that is that is the beauty of car camping. It's perfect for, for wildlife photography, if the location allows. And like I said, I've got all my gear ready to go, and uh, let's go and see what we can get some pictures of. <laughs>
Yeah, so we're in position. Well, the thing is, <laughs> with barn owls and a big expanse like this, they can just fly anywhere. So it's just potluck. It's finding the right, uh, right place. And obviously the sun dictates. So anyway, we're in position. We'll hope it flies over. Uh, I've seen it flying over this, this particular path, if you will. So we're going to try our hand here. We've just got the, obviously, the 500 with the 500 PF. I've not put a teleconverter on because the uh, I've got the crop factor on that. And just brought a beanbag with me. Link in the description below <laughs> if you want one. Um, yeah, you just, you know, stick it on top of the wall. It's perfect. When I was driving down, a tawny owl flew straight across the road and landed in a tree next to uh, next to the road so i managed to lean back got the camera it was in the back of the car and i just managed to get a few stills of it and i managed to get the beanbag onto the window got the window down and i caught <laughs> i caught the foot on the top of the glass and uh, it bloody spooked it so I couldn't get any footage of it, but I've, I've got a few stills, you know, they, they weren't that bad, but it was really nice to see the tawny owl, because they are notoriously, you know, difficult to photograph. You don't see them very, you hear them all the time, but you just don't see them, so. But we've had a few shots of the, the barn owl this morning. Hopefully get some more. Um, curly, loads of curlews knocking about. They're really nice to see. So, let's see what else we can do. Not a lot happening. A few hers knocking about. Got a oh, let me spin us round. We're right in the sun. That's better. So, like I said, uh, yeah, a few hers knocking about. Not seen, not seen a right lot to be honest. Had the barn owl out this morning. Two flights past us, and he managed to to catch something, but didn't get any great shots. But so it's ten to twelve now. And I've just set up on this wall here, you can just see behind me. So I've got the beanbag and I'm just, I've been watching down this uh, this stone wall line, if you will, and we've had some meadow pipits and stone chats landing. So what I've done, I've just found another post. I've just put one a little bit closer and put it a little bit higher than the others in the hope that, you know, we might get uh, a male stone chat, would be lovely because they're a beautiful bird and i was just sat here and then out of the corner of my eye i just saw in in the same tree where i spotted the tawny owl this morning i just saw the shape fly into the tree anyway i walked over and the barn owl sat there no, tawny owl sat there staring at me bold as brass it was so i managed to get a few a few shots i didn't get any video footage but i got a couple of nice stills and <laughs> i've never ever photographed tawny owls before uh, because they are, I mean, you hear them all the time and they're just they're so elusive. And uh, to get two, well, it's obviously, it must be the same bird using the same tree. But, uh, yeah, to photograph it twice in one day, that's a proper bonus. So I'm well chuffed with that. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to sit here. It's a beautiful day and see uh, see what we can capture. Hopefully these stone chats will come along. Right, I've just got some, some images of that tawny owl. I wanted some video. I was going back to the car, which is literally, I don't know, 20 meters away, and it's flown off. Now, I've got the, I was going back for the tripod. I've managed to, I've got the camera on the tripod now. 
it's only a small copse of trees this so I'm thinking it it might it might just have stayed around because everywhere around it is completely open and I didn't see it fly so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna creep round here there's a possibility it might still be knocking about it'd be, a, it'd be fantastic if it would it'd be great to get some some video footage of it Camouflage, you would not believe the camouflage on it. You can hardly see it. It blends in unbelievably well. Right. I'm gonna to have to put this down now. I have to get this camera on the track. It's actually asleep. enjoyed that folks that's the end it was only a short film but something a bit different for me really uh, a lot of the stuff I do you know I go out do me observation work and you know I have a I have a kind of a plan in my head an idea and an image and it was just nice to do something you know a bit off the cuff really and have a wander around only I only kind of stayed in a well off an off mile radius something like that you know, didn't have to go too far, but I just had a fantastic uh, stalk on a on a brown hair, and it didn't come off. It it was a shame that I saw its ears. Its ears were up like that, and then they they went down, and I, I literally crawled. Oh, it must have been two hundred yards across the field, and I kind of lost where it was, and then I just saw something move, and I was right on top of it. Honestly, I must have been. I don't know, maybe maybe ten yards from it, and its eye was open, and it were it were kind of watching me, and I thought it's not going to settle, it's not going to sit up nice like I wanted it to, and I got I got a couple of pictures of it just led there, and and then I just backed off, and it I, I turned around and it it, it had run, so it it had been such a you know a treat to have got some nice pictures of the brown hair, but never mind, it's uh, it's one for next time, isn't it? But that. That's it really, it was just nice to have a wander around, got some nice pictures of, I got wheat here, stone chat, barn owl, um, what else did we get? Tawny owl, absolute, oh, that was fantastic to see the, the tawny owl, and uh, you know, in, in the daylight, that was a, a re that's a first for me, that. So, yeah, that's it, short video. Um, I haven't forgot about the trail cam vid, that's the next one, but I've had to move it, I've moved the cameras, I've put them in a different location, so that's the next video, so thanks for watching, thanks for all the continued support, it's uh, it's fantastic, you know, just keep pressing the like button, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.